tired of chasing prospects? Stop the sales cycle insanity. Welcome to Be Your Own Loud, where we talk to guests who've rebelled against the traditional sales process to build an audience of adoring fans who do the advertising for them. In every episode, Proudmouth's very own Matt Halloran interviews guests and reverse engineers their success to help you accelerate your influence and break free from the torment of sales. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome to another Be Your Own Loud podcast. I am your friendly neighborhood podcasting expert and host, Matt Halloran. You know, one of the greatest things that happens now that the world has started to open up is you get to go to conferences again and you get to hang out with human beings and like hug them and shake their hands. And I had the opportunity to do that with Shannon very, very recently at a conference that we were at. We were at the, with a hard rock in mm-hmm. Florida. So that's where yeah. we were. Nice place. Nice place. Yeah. Uh, I was really quite surprised they still let people smoke in there, but that, that is a different tangent. Anyway. Uh, and on top of was she really super cool and at a conference that we both really liked because the conference was cool. She is involved with an organization that very many people know about, but not enough actually take advantage of, which is a program called Strategic Coach. Dan Sullivan is the founder of that. Uh, Dan Sullivan happens to be a personal hero of mine. I've been following him for probably 20 years. And then I got to meet Shannon and she's really deep involved in Strategic Coach, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. But first off, Shannon, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. I am delighted to be here. Meeting you is really one of the highlights of the conference. Well, I had such a great time chatting with you because, again, uh, I love who you are as a human being and I love what you do. I love your focus uh, and I love your experience. And so let's start off by talking about that. Um, Tell us your story. How did you get to do this? Oh, my gosh. I'll try and make a long story short because I've been with Strategic Coach since July of 1991. So that's a long time. (laughs) So it started off that I was working for a training development company whose main client was General Motors of Canada. But one of the lines of business we had was um, seminar room space. And one of the companies that came in to use it, because Strategic Coach only had a very small administrative uh, office space on Queen Street West Toronto, if anyone knows that. It was kind of funky back then. And so they'd rented out seminar room space. So I met them. And one of the things I noticed imme- immediately is that the clients were quite different. They'd be like, very gregarious. Hi, how are you? And then they go, hello, I'm Bob. And I'd be like, don't you know each other already? Well, turns out they were all entrepreneurs, right? Uh, so, you know, five weeks later, after I got the opportunity to see Dan present, I was on board with Coach. That's a longer story. Uh, but I did that. I, I did. I actually sold strategic coach and I had s- sold retail before, never sold B2B, but I do have the kind of personality that people said, oh, you'd be good at it. Turns out there's a lot of skill <laughs> that goes underneath the selling personality part. But anyway, eventually I gained it. Very appreciative to my now husband for feeding me during those early years because he would take me out for dinner. Uh, but after about three, three and a half years, I got quite successful and made a very healthy income, but I was bored and I wasn't sure if I could still write like a two page essay. (laughs) I wasn't sure if I could put my thoughts together that way. So I was afraid that my brain was going to rest. So Mm -hmm. I went, I went back to school and I uh, talked to some client, a client in particular who directed me to this program where one of them was training and design. So it was a certificate program. I already had my BA and I completed the third course. <clears throat> pardon me, came up with the idea for the strategic coach team programs. Uh, then I told Babs, co-founder of strategic coach, along with Dan, and she said, great, let's do it. That was 1994. Uh, so 1995, I did it and I didn't know how to design a workshop. So Dan m- designed my first few. Then it turned out that, um, I didn't really follow his design very well. I needed to do my own. So then i went from coaching, mostly from watching him and then to designing my own workshops. And that was a long time ago. (laughs) So that, so my entire, my entire career has been the result of a school project. It's a byproduct, which I think is really fun, but I, I was very clear. I needed to pursue my own passion and I was super lucky that Babs and Dan found me. I found them. We've grown together and they gave me a ton of room to create that. Um, And it's something as Dan and Babs will tell you, they would never have created this if it was just up to them. So fortunately they had enough capacity to include another vision in there too. 
But why did they, what did they see in you specifically? Why was what you brought and how you brought it something that they just were like, okay, let's just do it? It's really interesting, probably because I'm a lot like they are. And that's not just from, oh, we kind of walk and talk and <laughs> do sort of things similar. That's actually measurable. So one of the things we love to use at Strategic Coach, and I started using, actually, I started using the Colby profile, which is K-O-L-B-E.com, not Colby the cheese. I started using that profile when I first started coaching assistants because I was coaching people very different than I am. And I kind of had to know how they worked, what was important to them, how they problem solved, how they, how their mental energy played out because it was different than mine. But if you measure Dan, Babs, and me, we're incredibly similar. So I think in the beginning, and I was 26 when I joined coach, um, they just saw someone who had the cap had the future capability as yet unexpressed. Let's be very clear, but they saw enough of an entrepreneurial idea a, a cool idea that would help solve a, a, what we call a DOS issue, a danger, opportunity, or strength for our clients. And we're willing to give it a shot. I mean, the cool thing about an entrepreneurial world is that it's very iterative. You get to test and try and make better. So it wasn't like we were launching a $10 million program. The company wasn't even that big then. You know, we were just doing this little thing. Let's test it and see what works. And then, so they bet on me, basically. And the bet paid off and it has grown ever since. So their bottom line, I'd say they're betting people and they were betting on someone that was enough like them that they could see that it would pay off. When did you figure out who you were? Oh, aren't we all works in progress? <laughs> oh man, I'm still learning my every day. Uh, but we all have different sorts of permissive abilities, right? We say to ourselves, I, I, I'm starting to feel comfortable in this shell. And obviously it's different levels of comfort and, and hopefully we continue to grow in those levels of comfort. But at some point there had to have been a point where you gave your permission, yourself permission to be Shannon, who you are, even some of that today. What, how, talk about how that happened. There are a few key influences I'm going to say really paid off, really made a difference. First of all, I was raised by my parents um, and my parents were incredibly trusting people. And I met my, actually my mom and I were having a conversation about this on Saturday. She said, you know, I just knew that if I trusted you, if I, that you would find your way. So I was given, I would, I didn't have to conform or have to be a certain way to make my parents happy. I just had to be me. So I had that initial, which I realized almost no one else gets. Uh, very few people have that unconditional support to just, oh, can't wait to see how you turn out, right? And not from a controlling standpoint, but from a celebratory exploring. Now, that means I uh, went down a lot of different paths and kissed a lot of frogs. No, <laughs> it's a fairly exploratory path when you do that. But I ended up in a really, really, really good place. So that would be one. The other thing was actually getting my, my Colby profile done. It's very validating. It does not measure personality, does not measure um, intellect when I'm blessed to have a decent amount of that. Um, but what it does measure is how you strive. So how you problem solve, how you, how you approach it. And when I first got my results back in a, what's called initiating quick start. So if it's new and different, it's automatically better. Also known as bright, shiny objects, <laughs> but it also said that your mental energy for being super specific and detailed and designing and arranging and planning is really short. It kicks in at the very last minute for a very short period of time. So when I saw that, I didn't think I was, all of a sudden it's like, you're not crazy. Your strengths are fan fantastic in the right place, okay? It explains why I never fit into the school system at all, despite getting through it. Uh, you know, I, and I was good with people. I was good at sales. I was good at promoting. I was good at risk-taking. I had an instinct for it. And Colby laid that out on paper, black and white and color and words. It was like, oh, and Dan and Babs are very similar. So that was, and so is my husband, actually. <laughs> it's really birds of a feather. So that was very validating. And then strategic coach also has a concept called unique ability and unique ability is looking at just four different areas of capabilities. One is incompetent. This is when you put in the time and effort, you don't get the results. Okay. So it's frustrating. It's hard. It's Joe Polish would say hard, annoying, lame, and <laughs> frustrating, you know, a half experience. Um, so it's, I, you know, there's, those are the activities you just don't want to go. And for me, anything administrative, 
pretty much falls into that realm, which was my very first job. Can't believe I even got through that one. Um, then there's activities at which you are competent, you're adequate, you're okay, but so are a lot of other people. So there's a lot of um, competition for that level of capability. Then there's some things at which you have superior skill. You're better at it than most people. Them saying that, not your ego. This is other people saying, you're really awesome at this. Like you are having these conversations. Um, actually, you're actually the next one. And then unique ability is not only do you have superior skill, you have passion. You love it. Your eyes light up. You can always see room to get better. You can always see improvement. So it's never ending. And then, and then you just, and it's interesting because we have so much passion and because it gives you energy, we think, but we can always see room to get better. We kind of think we're not very good, but the opposite is true. People who don't have that passion and don't, doesn't give them energy. They actually run out of steam. <laughs> they know, theoretically, they know they could, that they could go, that they could get better. I can talk, um, but not practically, but that, so that's really what unique ability is. Other words are when you have a real passion and you get to be a hero to other people because you're creating value for them. So with the concept of unique ability and that being kind of a culture, it's, it's kind of like, what's your unique ability? Like you're kind of expected to have one, uh, which gives you an enormous amount of permission to be yourself and your best self, if that makes sense. It does. It, it fascinating journey. And, uh, I took the Colby for the first time in uh, 2007 and, um, I got done taking the Colby. Uh, we took it as a coaching program and we sat down and reviewed it. And, um, they, everybody said, Oh my God, Matt, everything now makes sense with you. Uh, because I was like a nine quick start. Uh, uh, and then all of my other numbers were absolutely abysmal, uh, because I'm, uh, I'm a shoot aim ready sort of guy. I'll figure it out as I go. Uh, because that's just, that's the way my life has always been. And it's interesting because I think a lot of people who listen to the show, uh, and a lot of people who are listening to what you're saying are like, Oh my God. Okay. So there's a reason why I am doing this. And so many people focus so hard on trying to be good at things that they suck at. I'm paraphrasing, of course, uh, instead of really focusing on their unique ability. You know, I've had a lot of people who, who've said to me, uh, Matt, you're so lucky uh, that you get to do what you love. And I say, this isn't luck at all. This is entirely by design. I may be a hardcore quick start, but I know what I want. I know how I'm going to get it. And I create a plan to do it. And I surround myself with the people who will help me do that. So I want to talk about that very quickly because this is a huge um, uh, control issue, right? We have to talk about that. So a lot of people who are fiercely entrepreneurial who want to have their own unique ability and allow that to blossom into what it can be are very, very afraid uh, to delegate things. And that's a huge component of strategic coach. Can you talk a little bit about that? A hundred percent. So here, there's a, a little paradox that happens. If you want to be freed up and leveraged to do just the few things that you're unique at. And by the way, when we do the circles, incompetent, competent, excellent, unique, it's small. It's a small circle, two, maybe three things that you're superb at that other people go, wow, how do you do that? You know, and, it, and, it, and here's the thing you for you, it's so easy. You don't even think about it. You can, we take our unique abilities for granted. And, and I heard this great coaching piece. It's actually on TikTok video that said, you have to do the thing. Well, can't everybody do it? The thing that you think everyone else can do, they can't. Like for you doing podcasts, Matt, you're like, can everyone do this? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. You've learned this through comparison, but for you, it's so blooming easy, right? It's just not a stress. I feel exactly the same way. Um, just a little quick counterpoint to what you're saying. It's not that your other things are abysmal, abysmal. You have an incredible ability to simplify and to adapt, right? Those are strengths. Colby only measures strengths. If you're looking for weaknesses, you have to go to another profile. Um, so it's so useful. But back to your question, if you want to be able to focus in on your unique ability, you have to be, if, unless you're going to play super, super small, which I presume no one listening wants to do that. You have to be willing to surround yourself and share with other people who are as unique in their areas as you are in yours. Now, what we don't really like doing is delegating to someone who's worse at it than we are. And then, and then also it's so painful to take it back. You just want to get, gets really get irked and bothered very quickly. So the point here is to effectively pass the baton. 
right? To the role, what we call the right who. So we have an awesome book called Who Not How, somewhere in this pile over here. And when you are, when you, when you're the right who for the, for your situations, and then you surround yourself with who are the right who's and who, who can love and be brilliant at all the things you're not. And you're kind of like, wow, someone else is really good at that. That's incredible. Who would want to do that? Well, just not you. Right. So you have to make sure that you give a lot of credit to people, even if you would hate it. That doesn't mean it's a hateful activity. It just means you hate it. Right. So it means you have to be very validating. It's like, oh my gosh, love how you do spreadsheets, love how you handle the admin, love how you run the office, love how you are so great with the tech, whatever it is. You know, you just like thank you because they free you up. If the, if the name of the game is freedom and you want to be free to do what you're unique at, you read just put together your who's people who show up and they're like, frankly, they're itching to get at the things that you're not doing well. Cause them watching you do it is painful to them. <laughs> they really would like to clean your office or handle your tech or do whatever. So it's, it's having that mindset first of all. And then you can start to, Dan always has this great, he has this great expression. Your eyes only see and your ears only hear what your brain's looking for. So as soon as you start looking, bam, they're there. One of the biggest things that we did at Proudmouth specifically was when we hired Lisa, our chief operating officer, and and Kirk, who is unbelievably creative, but very detail oriented. And then you've got me, who is uh, very, very creative and very extemporaneous. Lisa is the glue that holds everything together. And what she does, she gets up in the morning to make it so that all of these things work. It's unbelievable. And she gets so much joy out of things that drive my partner and I I'm absolutely crazy. Now, I'm going to challenge you on something, though, because I hear this often in okay. the strategic coach model that people who join um, who don't see the bigger picture get frustrated because there is such a big push to delegate before the people think they can, whether it's emotionally, philosophically, spiritually, uh, physically, or financially. Talk about that, please. Um, well, a, a little bit of leverage goes a long way. So let me tell you my story because this might help. Uh, so when I was working with the salesperson who originally hired me, because I worked directly for her, as I was saying. And uh, so when I started working with Susan, we shared we shared a part-time person. <laughs> okay, So I had a quarter of a human. Great. Um, her name was Anon. Brilliant, brilliant, capable person. And uh, so one day, Susan wanted to hire someone else. She said, can you take over Anon yourself? So this is me going from a quarter to a half. I was doubling the amount of support I had. I was terrified. I was a salesperson working on straight commission, no, no net, no safety net at all. And, and so what happened was finally after, I think it was a good 10 days, I kind of had to make the decision. I'm like, Ugh. swallow the big lump in my throat, like, okay, I'll do it. And then Adon started supporting me like hundred percent of half the time that she was working part-time. And three weeks later, I said, how soon can you go full-time? The leverage was phenomenal. So when it's the right who, don't forget, I had a part-time person. So if anyone's like, I don't know if I can, I'm like, let me tell you, right? So I'm, I've heard that too, Matt. And, and people do overextend themselves. Please don't do that. Usually out of ego. So you know, just look at the next next available opportunity for you. Um, and then and then Anon did end up working for, um, with me full-time. And she's amazing. And then I end up having my own team of, of five. I think there were six of us, including me before we changed structures and then I became full part of strategic coach. There you go. Uh, so that's actually what happened. And it was kind of amazing because when you have the right person, the freedom it gives you to do more of what you are best to do, which by the way, I'm going to assume is creating value in the world and that people are paying you for. So that little bit of leverage frees you up to make more money. Cause frankly, when you're doing that stuff, you're not good at, at least for me, I'm slow. I'm not, it takes me forever. I overthink it. I have to check 14 times that it's correct. I'm not making any money when I'm doing that. If I can be freed up for even a small portion to free me up to go and create some more value, which people are willing to pay me for because I'm better at it, you know, then, then I can afford to hire more talent. And that's that upward cycle that happens. So, you know, I was the sixth person to join the strategic coach team. We're well over 120, 125. We're not massive hiring expansion right now. Right. So it doesn't happen. Like you don't have a team of 30 join you all at once. You build it incrementally. And then that little bit of leverage frees you up, creates more cash flow, buy more talent, more capability, 
and the thing, it just grows like that. Um, and the right people will, you'll exit the wrong ones quickly. And then I'm all about entrepreneurial teamwork. Uh, but the right ones, you know, you'll attract them. We've got a crazy number of people who've been with the company 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. So when it, when you free people up to do what they're unique at and support a really great purpose, they stay. You used a word uh, that we have talked a little bit about on this, and most of it is the abolition of the ego. Uh, a lot of the strategic coach people who I have had lots of interactions with over my time as a coach and as a person who's helped other business owners, there's an interesting balance there, it seems, in strategic coach, because it doesn't seem like you guys are aggressively attacking the ego of the client. You're actually kind of stoking that a little bit because of this whole unique ability idea. Can you elaborate on that, please? Okay, this is so fun. I actually think unique ability is an ego or have an inverse relationship. Ooh. Yep given some thought to this. So when, when I know what I'm unique at, I also know what I'm not, which by the way, is a great, much greater number of things. Yeah, that's really uh, yeah. And I can be, I can have complete confidence in what I'm unique at and complete humility at about everything else. So if you think about now, lots of metaphysical spiritual conversations we can have about ego. It is useful. It does get us to a certain point, but at some point it beca- it can become a ceiling. And, and I think it's different than being confident and where I can create value, which is not just me saying so, but it's the world saying, Shannon, we really love when you do this. It's really helped me. I had a client say how much my team success podcast made a difference to him during the lockdown. I was like, he walked up to me to meet me. I was in the Chicago office. This is last week because I just, I have to introduce myself here. And I thought he, most people talk about my, the podcast I have with Dan. No, he's talking about mine. That did stoke my ego, just saying. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, I know, right? It's it's so validating that and you don't even know sometimes who's listening, right? You just hear about it sometimes. But the whole point, ego is kind of a little bit what we do to get ourselves out there in the world and throw ourselves against it and seeing what sticks. But it, when your your unique ability is very much also about value creation, it's how is it creating value for other people? How is it helping other people move ahead? And when they give you the feedback that it is, your job is to believe them and do more of those things and less of the things that we're like, they're like, mm, you're not really good at that. They're also correct, right? So your, our egos can get in the way of receiving that information about what how we're creating value and how we're not, not how we're good or bad not a useful distinction, but how are we creating value and how we're not. And if we move more in the area of, you know, how we're creating value for others and less in the way that we're not, then we're going to show up as a pretty fabulous contributing human being. And it's our ego doesn't have to be too fussed to be perfectly honest. We can be very confident, as I said, the things that we're great at in terms of how, how they reflect on other people or how they impact them. And then very have a ton of humility about all the stuff that you're not. When people think they're really good at stuff they're not, that's ego. Ah. Drive, drives me batty. Probably you too. Oh my. Uh, it, it's uh, one of the things that we say about financial services professionals, which is a lot of our focus here at Proudmouth, is just because you're a great financial advisor doesn't mean you're great at marketing, great at HR, great at management, great at taxes, right? And so it, it's interesting to see the look on their face. Uh, well, of, of course, I'm good at that stuff. Yeah. And, and there was a book a long time ago uh, called Good to Great, which was a huge motivator for me when I was really early on in my career, uh, because I didn't want to be just good at things. I wanted to find something that I was great at. And, and I think that's what I'm hearing from you uh, with, with all of this unique ability component. 100%. And there's another expression, good is the enemy of, of great, you know, and, and a fabulous book, Necessary Endings um, by, I'm going to, oh, I had Dr. Henry Cloud. You know, he, t- he uses the pruning analogy. He goes, so if you're a gardener, I'm not, you obviously prune off the dead sticks on a rose bush pretty hard. What really great rose growers and gardeners do is they cut off the good roses so that some of them can be great. That takes a little bit of courage. 
right? It takes courage to say, no, I'm not going to be trying, try and be good at everything. I'm going to be good at very, very, very few things. So where I have talents, Clifton Strengths is another phenomenal profile that helps you kind of grow into your capabilities. I learned a lot. I found Colby very validating and Clifton Strengths very inspiring. Uh, this is kind of ironic. I have maximizer number one. I want to make great things already, like good things even like great. Um, but then strategic number two, I was like, oh, I'm strategic. Where do I spend all my time? Strategic coach. <laughs> the irony was not lost on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so, but it means I have to be willing to not invest in other things. I mean, they, they have a great strategy. They say, you know, do damage control on the things that might sabotage your strengths, but just get adequate, get okay. Don't invest another penny. Don't invest another second. Go back to playing to your strengths. And they have a formula, talent times investment equals strength. And that's when you can get near perfect performance. Who doesn't love that? One other great author that's um, really supported this is, um, is Lewis Schiff in his book, Business Brilliant, where he, and I, he gave a presentation about the book at a coach office, which I helped organize, which was fun. But he said he and Russ Allen Prince interviewed a ton of very successful people from middle class up to ultra high net worth individuals over 20, 20 to 30 million at that time. And if you ask the number of middle class people, how many things they were good at, we like really good at, they said, oh, five to six, the ultra high net worth people. And you know what the number was? 1.9. <laughs> Less than two. Wow. Like if that's not a clue, I don't know what is. <laughs> no, that's super powerful. Well, uh, so I, I have one question. So I have two questions for the show. The first one is tell me your story, which is how we begin the show. And then to end the show, I like asking this question, uh, which is what should I have asked you that I didn't? I'm not sure. That, that I don't, I don't do shoots very much to be perfectly honest. My mom told me that was not a good word. Um, I could get away with swearing more easily than should. But another question is, I think the other question I'd like to answer, if that makes sense, is does it pay off? Does it really pay off or is it too good to be true? And I want to say, yeah, it does. It does pay off. So you'll be fulfilling your deepest needs. You'll be uh, creating the right audience who will actually the ones who both use your unique ability, they appreciate you, they say nice things, they reward and pay you. You get better as a result of working with them and they refer you. Like that's a, one of our success, well, five of our success criteria for a great thing, a great working relationship. Um, it's just incredibly fulfilling and it's not too good to be true. It absolutely, the world, if you just think about it from this standpoint, you know, if you're doing your, what you're unique at, what you love to do and are best at, most simple definition, who, if you think about athletes and entertainers, who do we pay the most money to watch work? Them. We're watching these people and, and they have superb top of the line skills and we pay to watch them work and they love it. So why are, why are you any different? Why are we any different? And so when you have that mindset, it shifts it a little bit from the, term, the normal one of just be good at everything. Nope, that's better for machines. We're better to be unique, and that's what the world appreciates, values, and is willing to pay for. You know, I, I used to challenge my clients all the time when I was a consultant, uh, are you a professional? And of course, they were like, of course I am, really. Well, so let, let's let's take what you do, and let's take, what, what's your favorite sport? And they'd say basketball, football, whatever, right? Very few people said cricket, by the way, but whatever. Uh, and so, uh, you know, basketball. <laughs> That's where yeah. you're asking. So, yeah, it's very true. Uh, so the, a lot of them said basketball. Uh, and so I was, okay, so who's your favorite basketball player? And this was a while ago. So they'd say, like, you know, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, stuff like that, right? <clears throat> and I would say, okay, so what is the difference between what they do and what you do? And it was everything, practice, focus, coaches. I mean, I had this whole list. It was funny when I would take them through that, Shannon, they would just be like, well, holy crap, are you serious? I guess I'm not a professional. Like, but no, you're kind of phoning it in. Uh, and if you've ever been involved in acting, that's like, that's not the greatest sort of, that's not a compliment at all. All right. So this, Matt, what a, what a brilliant thing to say to someone. No. Yeah, it's all yours. That? Yes, uh, absolutely. Really uh, I don't, I don't coach anybody anymore and you're way better at it than I ever was. So yes, if I can give you any gift, that would be it. And that would make me very happy. All right. So, so Shannon, so, so, uh, thank you for all of your time today. I know that you're a very busy person. Uh, I know that you have your own show. 
as people listen to this, I'm sure they're like, okay, this lady's unbelievable. If somebody wants to hire you, if somebody wants to get involved with what, what should they do and how can they reach out? Oh my goodness. Um, I actually only work with strategic coach clients. So to hire me, you need to join strategic coach. Uh, so strategiccoach.com is where to find all things. I have to say the, the amount of stuff we give away for free is, ri is ridiculous. And there's a new package that just went out. I'm like, wow, it's actually five of our books, five of our little our quarterly books. So go there. If you're even remotely interested in being entrepreneurial or taking your entrepreneurial success level to the next, next point, look at all the things. Um, so strategiccoach.com is, is, and obviously the most enriched experience is joining the strategic coach program. Um, but then if you want to check out things about entrepreneurial teamwork and surrounding yourself with really great who's and how to effectively pass the baton, um, then that's go to go and check out your team success. Uh, so that's your team success.com. That's where I have my books on, um, really it's a team success handbook, multiplication by subtraction. My team success podcast is, is listed there. And then if also, if you'd like to listen to Dan's and my podcast, it's called inside strategic coach. And that's a really fun kind of me getting into the, into Dan's brain. And I just pick things he said that I want to learn more about. And so it's me questioning him and we have a blast. We love it. Uh, so that would be another really great, uh, great thing to go check out. So lots of, a, a lot of resources, a lot of different ways to find me. And we will make sure that we have all of what you said in our show notes. So everybody, uh, <clears throat> one, if you want to find out what your unique ability is and then truly find out how to have that turn into something that changes your life and the life of people around you, uh, Strategic Coach is the program of all programs. Uh, there isn't anything like it out there. Uh, there probably never will be. Uh, it is the coaching program for entrepreneurs and business people. There isn't anything better. Um, uh, they're po follow all there's lots of podcasts, uh, which is wonderful. They just put out so much great thought leadership, but where the magic happens is, is when you join the program and you go to your first meeting, that's when you're going to look around and say, Oh my God, I'm not alone because so many people are listening to this and who are watching this feel like they're on an Island. And I'm telling you right now, you are not going to feel that way when you join the program. So Shannon, thank you very much for your thought leadership, all of the contributions that you've made to the world of entrepreneurialism, uh, which is that a word? It is now. Yay. Good. I made up another word. Maybe No, I think that's a good one, but, um, thank you for being on the show and thank you for sharing your wisdom with our audience. Oh, my pleasure, Matt. It's a joy hanging out with you. Uh, can I mention one more that I forgot? Sure. There's also uniqueability.com. Okay. <laughs> so a great resources there put together my, my sister, actually Julia Waller, who is all things unique ability all the time. Um, so lots of great things, but thank you for sharing your unique ability with me. It's really a pleasure. And if you have not subscribed to the show, make sure you click that subscribe now button below. And if you know somebody who should hear this, it'd be great for you to share. It's super easy to do that. But most importantly, give us a quick rating uh, wherever you're reading this, seeing this, hearing this, uh, because that always helps us find out what you like, what you don't like, and what we can do better. So for Shannon, strategic coach, and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Halloran. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thank you for listening to Be Your Own Loud, where we reverse engineer success to help you accelerate your influence and break free from the torment of sales. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our podcast, share it with others in your company or profession, and follow us on social media. This podcast is brought to you by Proud Mouth, the influence accelerators. Visit us at proudmouth.com and join our Influence Accelerator Academy for free to enhance your marketing mindset and know-how.